Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about Boyle's Law, which is one of the gas laws. Very exciting. Um, it deals with a change in pressure and volume. Okay, so we're going to look at how pressure and volume interact with each other. Here we go. Boyle's Law, okay? Um, it's like the easiest of the gas laws, I think. But Boyle's Law is dealing with how pressure and volume interact with each other. And all, almost all of these laws that we're going to look at, there's four different laws. We have Boyle's, Charles, gay lussacs and Avogadro, okay? So we're starting with Boyle's. All of them only deal with two variables at a time, okay? So I am going to keep two variables constant and I'm going to change two variables or see how they kind of interact with each other right see how they affect each other affect each other okay so the two variables I am changing I'm going to be dealing with pressure so I'm going to change pressure and volume. Okay, so these are the two variables that I'm actually dealing with in Boyle's Law. I'm going to keep the amount UNT, spelling is important, <laughs> and temp constant. Okay, so for all of Boyle's Law, I'm only changing pressure and volume. Okay, and a beautiful giganto equation okay is p1 v1 equals p2 v2 okay so this is the initial conditions this would be your final conditions okay so I'm starting out with a pressure and a volume of my gas okay pressure is always going to be in atmospheres Volume is always going to be in liters or some variation thereof. So you could solve these with, you know, milliliters. Actually, you could solve these in Tor as well. But it's really good to just get in the habit of getting everything into atmospheres and liters because eventually when we get to the ideal gas law, you're going to have to convert everything to there anyway. Okay? So I'd say unless the question specifically asks you to solve for pressure in MMHG, sulfur in atmospheres, just that way you're in a good habit and you won't screw up when you eventually get to ideal gas law, okay? And again, pressure two, so whatever your final pressure is gonna be is in an atmospheres, and your final volume is also going to be in liters, okay? You have to have the same units of pressure compared to each other and the same units of volume compared to each other, okay? All right, and these dudes, okay, pressure, and volume are inversely related. Okay, they have an inverse relationship. That means as one thing goes up, the other thing goes down. As one thing goes down, the other thing goes up. Okay, so um, for example, this horrible box I have for you, okay? Okay. If you could imagine that I'm going to change the volume, if I squish the volume, so I'm going to make the volume of this box smaller, okay? I'm making the volume smaller. Now the pressure in here is very much increased, right? The pressure has gone up because these particles are going to push on the walls of this container a lot more. The smaller and smaller my volume gets, the more and more that th those gas particles are pushing. If I expand, so if I make my volume bigger and I'm expanding it, well now it's like whew, these particles can breathe, okay? The pressure is not so much on them. So the, the volume gets bigger and the pressure went down, right? They're not pushing on the side of these, the side of the box as much anymore, okay? They're inversely related. 
So, so if I was going to do a graph of volume versus pressure, typically volume would be on our x axis and pressure would be on our y because it's much easier to actually control the volume, right? It's easier to have a syringe and you are the one squeezing the syringe to compress the air, or you're the one pulling out the syringe to expand the air. It's much harder in real life to actually do something to affect the pressure. So I have volume on my X, pressure on my Y, okay? And as one goes up, the other goes down. So if volume is really small, okay? Pressure is really high. And as I, you know, volume is getting like medium, pressure would be medium. Volume is getting huge, pressure is now going down. So I get this exponential looking graph, okay? And the best I can with that drawing, Ugh. okay? But you get the idea, right? So as, as one thing is really small, so volume's really small, pressure's really high. If volume's really big, pressure's really low, okay? All right, that's how you graph it. Um, and the water bottle, ah, yeah. So we've all done that thing where you have a water bottle, and you're done drinking it, and you twist the water bottle, and you twist it and twist it and twist it, and the, you know, the cap is on the water bottle, and you twist it so much you kind of squeeze it, and the cap will fly off, okay? That's a perfect example of, of Boyle's Law, okay? You start it out with an initial volume, of your water bottle that was large, right? And initial pressure that was low. As I twist my water bottle, I'm making the volume go down. Okay, so I'm making the volume go down, 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 down. I'm twisting it, I'm making it really small. The pressure inside that is going up because these are inversely related. If the pressure goes up so much, you can literally explode the, the cap off of your water bottle. Neat, okay? Just don't do it in class. Uh, all right, two examples, one easy, one medium. I mean, these are not super difficult, <clears throat> but here we go. Example number one. If you had a syringe that had 30 mils of 1.1 atmospheric pressure of a gas, and I compress that syringe, so I squish the syringe, to five mils, what's the new pressure? Okay, super easy. This is always gonna be P1, V1 equals P2, V2, okay? I'm dealing with a volume and a pressure, and I've changed my volume, I wanna find my new pressure. Okay, so I just plug it in, right? My initial pressure, is 1.1. My initial volume, 30 mils. Equals my final pressure, I don't know. It's my unknown, P2, who knows? My final volume, five mils, okay? So I can multiply these guys together, 30 times 1.1 would be 33 atmospheres times milliliter. Don't freak out about your units. I promise they'll cancel and it'll all work out nicely. And that equals P2 times five mils. I want to isolate my variable. Divide by five mils. If I did it on the right, I have to do it on the left. Okay. Five mils cancels out. Milliliter and milliliter cancel out. I get 33 divided by five, which is 6.6. .6, and I'm left in the variable, the variable, I'm left in the units of atmosphere, which makes sense because I just solved for pressure, okay? Now, if you were in my class, what I would make you do after this, right? You solve for it, I would then make you draw a picture of initial and final conditions. So let's do that real quick, okay? So if I had initial, and final, okay? My volume changed. So I have to show that my volume went from 30 mils to five mils. 
So my initial volume is bigger than my final volume, okay? Again, I care that you understand the concept. I'm not gonna sit there with a ruler and be like, mm, is this really 30? Mm, I don't know, okay? No, okay, what I, what I care about is that you understand the concept that the volume went smaller, the volume was smaller, okay? And the pressure increased, okay? But I didn't change the number of particles and I didn't change the, the temperature. So it doesn't matter how many you start with. If you pick two particles to start with, you better end with two particles. Okay, to show me that you understand the amount of gas didn't change. If you draw 17 in there, you better end with 17 to show me that the amount didn't change. All right. But if I start with five, I better end with five. Okay. And my temperature, because the amount hasn't changed and my temperature also hasn't changed. So whatever size the arrow is to begin with, has to be the same size in my final. I'm regretting this decision to draw out five. Okay, there you go. And you can tell, right, the pressure inside this tiny box would be much higher. They're pushing on the side of the container more than in this larger box, which makes sense. The pressure went up. The pressure went from 1.1 to 6.6. .6. Okay, that was the easy one. The hard example, okay, question number two would be if my initial conditions in a 2.5 liter uh, and a pressure of 829 torr, okay? And the new pressure is now measured to be 0 0.92 atmospheres. What's the new volume? Okay, so right now you actually cannot solve this because I'm given an initial pressure in tor and a final pressure in atmosphere. So all I have to do is convert. Okay, this is not, not the end of the world, it's gonna be fine. Okay, P1V1 equals P2V2. And I need to convert. So if I had 829 tor. I need to get out of tor and into atmospheres. You don't have to memorize this conversion on the back of your periodic table. 760 tor is one atmosphere. Tor and tor will cancel and I'll get an answer of one point something, 1.09. Okay, so this is actually my initial pressure that I'm going to use. Now I can plug in, okay? So pressure one, instead of using 829, I'm gonna use 1.09. Volume one, 2.5 liters. Pressure two, 0 0.92. Volume two, I don't know, that's what I'm solving for, okay? To solve for my variable, I just isolate my variable, right, that's what I'm solving for. So divide by 0 0.92 atmospheres, And, right, these guys cancel out, atmosphere and atmosphere cancel out, you plug in some numbers into your calculator, and you get 2.96 liters is your final volume. And that makes sense because I'm solving for volume and I get a unit in liters. And again, I would make you draw your initial and final conditions, okay? So initial, final, all right? I started with a volume of 2.5, I ended with a volume of 2.9. So in this case, my initial volume is smaller than my final volume, okay? My, my final volume is bigger. My pressure went down, it went from 1.09 to 0.92, but my Number of molecules didn't change. My temperature didn't change. So if I started with three, I better end with three. And whatever size arrow I draw has to be the same to show that the temperature didn't change. Okay? Easy enough. All right. That's it. Okay, so Boyle's Law is just 
pressure one times volume one equals pressure two times volume two. Okay, make sure that you're checking your units to make sure that everything is in the same units. And other than that, it's pretty easy. All right, good luck.